All right, hope everybody's doing well. I'm just doing a video on my growing paints collection and it focuses on Topps Vault items. This is really, really cool. I want to try to do a, a relatively well video here, but unfortunately I can't show everything and if I did, I just don't want to do a lot of high quality images that people can kind of steal, you know, off of the web. Not that anybody's going to do that, but you just never know. So back in the day I collected the Growing Pains complete top set from Marchant Trading Cards. I can't remember if I bought a box of them or what I did or if I bought a, a complete set and some packs but I know I had packs at one point and that's what the set looks like and then Topps Vault would do lots of proofs and other kinds of things that came out with a set sometimes you would get a fraction of it or be outbid or there'd be an auction that ended that didn't didn't uh, go and then what happens is that you ended up uh, missing those um, buy it now is after they because to Topps would do an auction then they would relist it as a buy it now and then sometimes you miss that and it would disappear and it's like oh shoot um, but here are the stickers from the set there. It's really, really cool to have the stickers there. And what I have for you today is what the Top Thought COA used to look like here. Really cool. And this is just for maybe one of those items. I'm not sure which one it is because it just has a serial number. Back in the day, Tops had a website. You could look all that up, but I don't think you'd do that anymore. So unfortunately, that's lost. And I thought, well, well at least we have Worth Point where we can go and com look at the completed listings. Um, and you don't even have that anymore because Worth Point is still there, but unfortunately, they don't have data that goes that back that far. So I'm going to try to grab another item here. This is what the Topps Vault COA more or less looks like, I think, now. I'm not even sure if it looks like this. Just one of those cheap cardstock things you get at Office Max that you just uh, perforate the edges. It's like business cardstock there, and it's really unfortunate. This is for something else here, but that just gives you an idea how Topps quality went down. And the only thing about Topps Vault is that you... I used to be able to get items for between five and fifteen dollars at the most, at the very, very most, because you know the discounted items, and sometimes they got discounted big time, forty percent off or whatever, and sometimes that was enough to get you to buy something, because an eBay 101 or Top Slot 101 was quite amazing back then, but there were so many 101s that nobody ever really noticed or cared, and I know a lot of collectors did not even know anything about the Top Slot. So what we have here is go back to the stickers here. And we have, if I can get to this one here, first do this in order here, we have uh, Jason Seaver or uh, Alan Thicke, and there is the Alan Thicke one. So you can see what that image used to look like, and then that's what Alan Thicke went to from Tops. So that's really pretty cool. And then they have the hologram on the back of it. So there's that one. And then here's Joanna Kearns. I'm going to be very careful here so I don't knock over the... So there's Joanna Kearns, and there's sticker number two. So that's really pretty neat. I don't know what process this was, but you see the little lines on the side there? That's from a negative or a, um, a media slide. And you can find those images all over the web because these were very, very common images. So that's what Topps was able to use or get. And then there is Kirk Cameron right there, number three. Uh, number three. And then um, here is Ben. He is number five. I believe that's all I was able to get. I might actually have this one, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, all my archives are just kind of in disarray at the moment right now. So there is that one. Sorry. There, yeah, there is that one there. I don't believe I got the Tracy Gold one, because I don't remember if that was more popular or who was the most popular character to get. Because most people wanted the kids, uh, you know, the main kids, and the mom and dads were the secondary ones, and then the littler kids usually were not so, so popular there. So that is really pretty neat. And unfortunately, again, things have changed a lot. So you can't find a lot of info on some of the old top stuff that was sold a number, you know, 10, 15, even 20 years ago. I just don't remember. It wasn't necessarily 20 years ago, but it was a number of years ago. Then we go to the internet here and just show you a few things here. This is a, a, a 2017 Leaf Pop Century In Memoriam autograph, number 3 of 10, Alan Thick. Alan Thick's autograph is not $125 because for, at one point he had a whole bunch of checks floating around. How they got into the public circuit is beyond me. Somebody probably filched them out of the trash and sent them to one of these companies and then sold Alan Thick autographs for $15. I think I'm all of into Alan Thick's autograph for $15 on a check. And it's a really special one. But you see this image right here? That's the one right here. Or it's one very similar to that same photo shoot. See, so these images are not rare at all. Not rare at all. And then we have 
Um, but unfortunately, this is kind of a disrespect thing because Al, I, I can't zoom in on that. I really wished I could. But that's a sticker autograph of Alan Thicke. That's awful. After he died. You know, so these sticker autographs, you know, can be placed on your cards after you die. That's really pretty. That's why I hate sticker autographs. Uh, one of the main reasons why I hate sticker autographs. Kobe Bryant and some of those other people probably also had sticker autographs. It's just absolutely crazy. I think Corey Haim got a bunch of sticker autographs after he died. And then we want to go back to Growing Pains over here. Um, these are just, you know, numerous things here. But boxes, Baseball Card Exchange wants $125 for a box. And I remember that they weren't more than 20 bucks for a whole box or something crazy back in the day. Um, and they just usually had a laundry marker on it. I don't know. There's no reason to uh, put um, a box in uh, plastic or wrapper. Mainly because, you know, there are no inserts here other than the stickers. There should be no tomfoolery with these boxes because they were from 1988. The junk wax era, as some people would call it. And also, the other thing is that... Um, once you finish the 66 card set and 11 card set, there's no reason to rip any other pa packs open unless you're looking for an error like a blank back card or something like that. It was not going to happen. Usually those happened when, like the set process, you know, when they packaged a set together. Um, but that being said, I have one or two more items to share with you here. And these are absolutely astounding. They are super hard to show. And this is a script from Growing Paints. How amazing is that? I want to say this was like 20 bucks. Um, back in the day, really, plus shipping. That was absolutely insane, and I bought two of them. So I have a second one here, and this is not only a script, this is from August 7th of 1990. I don't, th I think these are hundreds of dollars now, if that, maybe, maybe a thousand dollars. I don't know what a script would be worth, but these are special. These are not your typical script that anybody can print, print, you know, on the internet, and, and, um, and make copies and sell them as authentic scripts with fake autographs on it. That's not what they are. These are wardrobe scripts showing actually Polaroids of the cast. So there's Alan Thicke in a couple of shots there. And there are, and that's why I don't want to show, you know, super high quality images. These are more Alan Thicke ones because the last thing I need to do is people selling, you know, 4x6 and 8x10s of these pictures on eBay. Um, and that's what happens. People just glean stuff off the web and then make money off of it. And there's our, our old buddy Kirk Cameron right there. Some of them are quite comical poses in some of these. Uh, there's Jeremy Miller doing his ta-da pose and a couple of things. That's really cool. And I think Tracy Gold is in here somewhere. There's Joanna Kearns right there. So that's really pretty neat. I think I have Joanna Kearns autograph, but don't quote me on that one. It's one of the um, popular television moms. And there's Tracy Gold right there. And then usually, and there's Ash Ashley Johnson. You don't see very many pictures of those. But people will take these old Polaroids and they would um, sell them, you know, anywhere between, um, ten, I would say $10, but not anymore. But, you know, usually about $50 a Polaroid or $100 a Polaroid. You know, so this could be, you know, if you rip out all those Polaroids, that might be a $1,000 item there. I just don't know. Now we have one more, one more book to grab here. I mean, difficult piece with the tripod today. Okay. And the lighting. So there is this one. Now you can see growing pains right there. That's really, really cool. And again, I want to say these were $20 a piece. I didn't have a lot of money and I bought the ones that I thought had the best pictures in them. And unfortunately, you know, I went to go buy another one and either seller removed it from the listing or... But anyway, so there is um, Tracy Gold in some sort of kind of green makeup there. And there's that one there. I skipped over a few of the people here, but uh, and more Tracy Golds and uh, Alan Thicke. These may not have as much value anymore now because it's kind of, I won't say forgotten, but, you know, Kirk Cameron has a different path and Alan Thicke has passed. And, you know, these people are not super, um, they're, you know, they're famous, but they're just not, you know, um, really, there's some other, other other people and some other stuff there. So that's in some more Ashley Johnson pictures there. That is just absolutely amazing. I'm sorry about the camera, but I've filmed this thing about five times. I'm not going to film any more. I, I said, I said, I do have Alan Thicke's autograph, and I think I have the mom's autograph, Joanna Kearns, I think. And I want to say that um, Joanna Kearns' item I've never shown on, on, on my channel, ever. And I always like to show every autograph that I got. But the reason why I didn't show it is because it had her social security and a lot of private information on it. And that was on eBay auction and you could look at it and zoom in on it and do all this. And it was crazy. Seeing somebody's social security number that wasn't even blocked out. I can't remember if I emailed the seller and told them to knock it off 
or whatever, but I bought the item um, and then hopefully her social security number did not get compromised. But that's the thing. Some people have a bunch of information out there and it just takes one person or the eagle eye to say, aha, I can compromise some famous celebrity. That's not the point of the video. The point of the video is that I had a real fun time doing this. I had a really uh, cool, um, and the only disappointing thing was that I was not able to complete all the stickers. Either Tops didn't have them all, or for whatever reason, um, I missed some of them. I just, and there's none available for sale. And none ever will be for sale unless you get them from good old Probstein123 or whatever it is. I got outbid by him so many times from the Topps Vault. It was absolutely insane. And he would just buy up everything. And he didn't care what it cost. And then you look at Probstein's thing. And some of those things he spent only $10 on are between $700 and $1,000 each. And, and even more so for some of the bigger names. So that is what I have for you today. Uh, 12, uh, 11 minutes. And thank you for watching.